Awesome. Hey, we are springing into blue. We are. Wow. We're springing into bloom, but we are. But we are springing into summer on this sermon series right now. As you can see up on this beautiful slide, if I just looked, I would know. Um, yes, I am excited to be able to preach today. Mac last week shared about how throwing off everything that hinders and running our race, you know, being humble and allowing ourselves to grow is really what helps us to spring, right? And, and again, focusing on this spring into summer series, I'm going to open up with a scripture. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm chapter one, right? First, first chapter in the book of Psalms, we're going to pick up here in verse one. And it says, how happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction. Everybody say that with me. Lord's instruction. One more time. Lord's instruction. Amen. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside a flowing stream that bears its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. And the church said, amen. amen. That's right. And as we're focusing here on spring, right? You know, we go through our April showers, right? And, you know, it's been a little rainy lately, but it ultimately brings the beautiful blooms that come in the weeks uh, ahead, right? And all those trees are getting their leaves again and everything's turning green, right? For me, summer equals green. Green grass, green leaves, blue skies. You know, we're going to go, let's go with the color theme. Uh, but today I want to focus on all those plants and the process that they're going through right now and how that relates to us spiritually, right? How those plants, they need their nourishment, right? They need to cult, like in order to cultivate those rich colors and those beautiful flowers, they got to figure out how to get the energy to do so. You know, and I was thinking a lot about this in preparation, you know, specifically talking about, um, Right now, as I'm sure you are all seeing, those yellow little flowers popping up in your lawn everywhere, right? And for some, they might think, oh, how pretty. And for others, they might be a direct assault on your lawn care services. But whether it's dandelions or weeds, lawn mowing, whatever, you know, these, these plants, right? These little weeds, these dandelions, whatever it may be, they've got lessons for us to learn. So I want to look at that today, right? Um, I love this in this passage how it talks about Man, how happy is the person that is like a tree planted beside a flowing stream? You know, I got a picture here, um, a tree whose roots are doing everything they can to suck as much nourishment as it can out of that stream right there. How happy is that tree, right? That tree never wants for anything. That tree is never worried about the lack of rain or the surplus of rain, because no matter what, he's got a flowing stream right there to drink from. How happy is that tree? And that's how happy we can be when we delight in the Lord's instruction, right? And the Lord's instruction could be a number of different things, right? That could be our prayer. That could be our personal prayer time with God. That could be our Bible study, right? In nourishing ourselves with God's word. And that can also be our accountability, whether that's through the Holy Spirit or through the people that God has put in our lives, right? We can be nourished. We can be planted in that stream of the Lord's instruction of Bible, prayer, and accountability. But it's up to us, right? We have to make that choice. That, that tree that we just looked at, that tree did not just by happenstance grow roots. It made an effort to grow those roots into that stream to get the nourish nourishment that it needs. And, uh, you know, in, in reading about roots, I, I was, you know, I learned that there's really only like two main kinds of roots that you're going to see in plants, right? For any biology majors out there, don't come for me. I'm not an expert, all right? I'm just saying in general, all right? We're speaking in generalities today. Um, the taproot is one of the main structures, right? And this is, this is what a taproot looks like. This is going to be the one we're going to focus on today. So this is the unfortunate dandelion, right? <laughs> that pesky little weed that no matter how many times you pick, it just keeps growing back. And the reason is the dandelion has a taproot system like that of an oak tree. So the, the primary focus of, of the flower or the tree is to grow this very strong main vein root as far down into the soil as it can, right? And it tries to get as deep as possible so that it can't be uprooted. And then you see these ancillary roots come out on the other side, and those are kind of grabbing onto other soil or trying to grab nourishment from elsewhere. Um, so the taproot is that primary thick and dominant root with other roots stemming off of it, right? Think dandelion, think oak tree. 
And today, I want to focus on why nourishing our roots is so important for us spiritually. So that leads me to my first point, nourishing roots, right? We're going to pick up here in Ephesus chapter 3. And I know for some of you who've been going through the book of Ephesus with the Thrive Group, hopefully this hits home for you. Uh, For those of you who don't know, Ephesus was the epicenter of worship for Greek and Roman gods, right? So it was kind of like this melting pot of culture. And Paul, he's writing this letter to the church there, not necessarily to address specific needs, but more of like a, this is what the church should look like. It was more of a general letter to say, hey, this is what God's kingdom should be. This is what the community of believers need to establish themselves, right? You might read some of his other, other letters and he's addressing specific people or a specific issue. This was kind of like a blanket statement that obviously is still applicable to us today. So again, picking up here, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 it reads I pray that he may grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power in your inner being through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith I pray that you being rooted and firmly established other other verses say being founded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and width, height and depth of God's love, and to know Christ's love that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, right? I love how it says there, being rooted and firmly established in love. You know, what does it mean to be rooted or established? What does it mean to truly root ourselves or establish ourselves in something? Well, if you look at the Greek words for those two phrases, being rooted means I cause to take root. It means I plant, fix firmly or establish. And then the Greek word for firmly established or being founded means I found, I lay the foundation of. It's a literal phrase. So the two Greek words that Paul used to say being rooted and firmly established were words that would cause the reader or the listener to have to take action. I found, I root, I firmly establish, right? And I think that's so important as we go through this message today to consider and remember that there is effort on our part, right? We do have to take a stand for our faith. We do have to put in the effort to be firmly rooted, right? Again, that tree planted by the stream did not merely just grow a thick root system by chance, but through intentional effort and energy, it directed everything it had to make sure that it would never be moved, to make sure that it would never want for anything else once it established that firm foundation, that root system. You know, I cause, I found, right? And I think it's so important, again, to remember that these consistent spiritual disciplines, right? Bible, prayer, accountability are the things that allow us to make sure that we will never be moved or never be shaken spiritually, right? It's that inner strength that leads us to outward growth. Um, Let's do something a little different. Uh, Michael, can I have you come up here for a second? All right, come on up, buddy. Oh, right up. Here we go. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here today. So Michael's going to be my little prop, right? And Michael here is going to represent a root standing on his own, okay? Think about a a single flower in a field or something like that. For all intents and purposes, not literally, I will play the enemy in this situation, right? And if I come against Michael and he's the only, he's the only root, right, out there, he's the only flower, it's going to be pretty easy for me to target him. Wouldn't you agree? I got no distractions. I got nobody else to go after. So I'm going to come up and I'm just going to be able to move Michael wherever I want, right? However I want, with whatever I want, because he is standing on his own, right? He might be trying to root himself, but because he's not firmly established or firmly rooted, he is easily shaken. Can we get Michael some friends? Damaris, Vaughn, come up here. Round of applause for our volunteers today. All right, go ahead. Damaris, why don't you stand here on his right and then Vaughn on his left. You guys go ahead and lock arms there for me. Awesome, awesome. So now we've got a different version of Michael, right? (laughs) Now Michael has put some energy in his roots. He's firmly established. He's firmly rooted. You guys turn for me. All right, now I'm going to try to give Michael a push, but I can't. I'm I'm actually pushing him now. He's not going anywhere, (laughs) right? 
And I think this is such an important illustration for us spiritually because when Michael's firmly established, he might shake, he might move. I'm putting some force into him right now. He's not going anywhere though. He's not going anywhere because he's firmly established because he's firmly rooted in what he should be, right? He's got prayer and Bible study. He's got accountability. He's got friendships. He's not going anywhere. Michael's firmly established. He's rooted in the Lord. Say that with me. I will be rooted in the Lord. Thank you. You guys may be dismissed. Thank you very much. Right? And that's fun. You know, that, that's a fun example to look at. And I, I think, it, you know, I appreciate these guys being willing to come up here for me to be able to use them as an example But really think about that spiritually. You know, are we somebody who, like a single dandelion in a field, is an easy target? When Satan looks at your life, does he say, I'm going to give all my time and attention to this one dandelion? Because I'll tell you what, if if it's me and that's my lawn, that sucker's gone. (laughs) That's easy. I'm going to get out of the car, probably still in my dress pants and a a button-down, and I'm going to pluck that guy right out of the ground little to no effort, not even break a sweat, right? But if I'm surrounded by a bunch of other dandelions, that's overwhelming. I'm probably going to call somebody. I'm not going to bother. That seems like a lot of work. You know what I mean? But don't we want the enemy to be overwhelmed when he comes after us? Don't we want him to take a second look and not be focused with all his time and attention on what we have going on? Because we're surrounded by other people who are firmly established and firmly rooted in God, right? When you fight alone, you are easily overthrown. When you fight alone, you are easily overthrown. And we don't want to be easily overthrown. We want to make sure that we are nourishing those roots, right? I mean, the the amazing part about these tap roots, when you really think about it, is that before that dandelion ever even sprouts a yellow flower, it's growing inches and feet below the surface to ensure that you can never uproot it. Before it even thinks about stepping out into the territory or calling attention to itself, it makes sure that it is so sound and rooted under the surface that no matter what comes against it, it's not going to be shaken. It won't be moved. And I think we need to establish that for ourselves spiritually. We need to make sure that we're nourishing those roots, right? The important things, putting the first things first so that no matter what life throws at us, no matter what scheme the enemy may come to us with, we are firmly established. We are rooted in Christ's love. So today, have you nourished or neglected your spiritual roots lately? Do we have the attitude of always growing deeper to be stronger for God? You know, the message today is titled, To Spring Into Bloom. And in order for us to flourish, we have to make sure we are establishing firm roots. Which leads me to my second point. We are going to flourish in faith. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Let's turn there. Just one chapter over. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 reads, Until we all reach unity in the faith, And in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness, then we will no longer be little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness in the techniques of deceit. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ From him, the whole body fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for building itself up in love by the proper working of each individual part. Growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. You know, what's really so mind-blowing and convicting about a lot of these plants or fruit trees or whatever it may be, is that before, again, before they ever even think about sprouting a flower or or trying to bear fruit, they have established for themselves that firm foundation, right? They've grown that taproot. 
They've grown those other roots around them to make sure that they get the nourishment they need. But when I was reading about this, I, I stumbled upon this, and it talks about immaturity in plants. It said, many fruit-bearing plants, especially trees like apple, citrus, or stone fruits, require a certain level of maturity before they start producing fruit. Young plants typically focus on vege vegetative growth and establishing their root system before diverting energy into flowering and fruiting. It can take several years for a newly planted fruit tree to reach maturity and start bearing fruit. Several years. How many of us have patience of several years? How many of us really think about our grow us growing and think, you know what, this might be a few years before I see any fruit from my actions right now? I mean, come on, in today's day and age in our society, we want that instant gratification. How many times does somebody send you a video on your phone and you go to open it up and it doesn't load and you just move on? Seriously. How many times do, 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 do you go to pull up your phone and it takes more than like a split second to whether, whether it's open or load something and you're like, ah, oh, this is taking forever. Do we even know what forever is? I'm pretty sure forever, if I looked it up right now in the Urban Dictionary, it would say anything over three milliseconds is forever. But these plants, these trees, these creations of God understand the process that it takes to get to bear fruit. They know that it will take years before they will see fruit on their limbs, before they will be able to grow that flower or whatever it may be, because they have to establish and keep the first things first. Without that proper root system, they're never going to be able to grow a flower or a fruit. And if they try prematurely, they're going to, unfortunately, they're going to misdistribute their energy and nourishment and resources, and then ultimately what? Wither and die. So in order for them to make it, they've got to make sure that their roots are the strongest thing about them. Yes. And let me tell you something about roots. They're not super sexy. They're not fun. They're not flashy. They're covered in dirt. They look weird, right? You know, when you pull a plant up and you see its roots, you don't think, wow, that is gorgeous. That is just the prettiest thing I have ever, let me marvel at these. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut the flowers off and put it in the pot upside down so I can just stare at the roots all day. Who does that? Nobody. But what's the most important part of the flower? What's the most important part of that plant? The stuff you don't see. The stuff you would never pay mind to or attention to. And how much more for us spiritually? The most important thing for us is that we pay attention to the things that nobody else sees. But in a day and age where everything needs to be posted or everything needs to be lauded and applauded, we're so focused on what everybody else sees. We're so focused on that outward appearance, on what our flower looks like, on what our fruit looks like. And we'll sacrifice maturity for the sake of getting there. We'll sacrifice in the short term because it looks good sooner. Because look where I am, right? Yeah, you're still over there. You haven't even grown a fruit yet, but I'm already. But my time will come if that's my attitude. And that plant will surpass me. That tree will surpass me because they're establishing what's most important first. Because they're getting it right when no one else is looking. And they're doing the things beneath the surface that matter way more than what in the short term we all tend to focus on. I mean, I was just, I was mind blown when I was reading that. Talking about several years. I mean, I think I'm not an agricultural person I may have a few plants in my yard, but by no means would I call myself a farmer. And if I had an apple tree that I planted, and after a year or two, it wasn't growing fruit, I would think something was wrong with that tree. I would think something was wrong with, with the tree itself, and we need to cut it down and start over if it's not bearing fruit. But the truth is, that tree is smarter than I am. 
That tree is doing what it needs to so that it can benefit me for many years to come. Even though my impatience wants me to see it grow, even if it was a subpar fruit or a less than, right? Rather than focusing on what it's doing is for the long haul. And for us, you know, again, we go back to the phone example. We think forever is a few seconds, but forever is eternity. Forever is a time that we can't really wrap our minds around, but it's there for all of us. And so in this mist of a life that we have, are we establishing the roots for eternity that we need? Are we doing the work now that maybe nobody may see, but God knows to establish that foundation for eternity, to establish the roots that are going to get us to where we really want to be? You know, I was uh, thinking about, like, again, how these, these trees, right, even an oak tree, never stops growing its roots. You know, like, even when they are 100 feet tall, right, or you go out to the redwoods and some of the tallest trees in all the world, right, these trees never stop growing their roots. Because if they did, they wouldn't be able to grow taller or stronger, like, it, it's amazing to me that even after they are already one of the most impressive things on the earth, they are still committed to growth. And for us, I think we have to focus on that constant revisit to the basics. You know, I'll give you another example, right? Like playing an instrument. You know, some of the best musicians of the world, they don't just play the song that they want to play every day. Right? What do they do? They focus on scales. They focus on the basics, right? They do technique drills over and over again so that when they go to play the song that they want to play, they can play it proficiently. They can play it excellently. But they're always coming back to the basics. Even though they're extremely talented, right? Whether it's guitar or piano, whether it's a wind instrument, whatever it may be, always going back to the basics so that they can be better and grow stronger and get more and more knowledge to their repertoire. For myself, you know, I'm just going to put it out there. It's kind of like golf. <laughs> just going to say. You look at these guys who play on the weekend, and you think, wow, they must just be phenom athletes, right? And for the most part, they are. They're, they're just incredible. But when you watch a tournament that takes place on a Thursday through a Sunday, every single morning before they go out and play their round, and every single night, when they're done playing their round, they go to the putting green and practice, they go to the chipping green and practice, and they go to the driving range and practice. And so we may see the couple of hours that they're actually playing, but they're there from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. if it takes to make sure that they're getting the basics down. Because all we want to focus on is that pretty shot that shows up on ESPN. But they're focused on every little detail that makes up that shot. They're focused on all those basics that lead up to that perf perfect moment, right? We've all heard the phrase that practice makes perfect, right? But it's so true. And again, even for us spiritually, we can't just focus on what we want for ourselves spiritually or what God can give us without nourishing the roots that allow him to use us. You know, I was talking with uh, Lucas recently, and this dude, we, we started playing, he started playing flag football maybe like a year ago. And prior to that point, he had never played football before. He ran cross country in high school, but never, never played the sport of football. So we had him come in. Not only was he playing football, but we also had him playing defensive line, which was definitely out of his element from all intents and purposes. But between every single play and when, when, when we would see something, he would come off the field and he would be talking with the guys on the sideline. So what can I do differently? You know, he'd be going to George. All right, so how could I make that play better next time? Or talking with Danny. Hey, I don't know what to do in this situation. How can you help me? And over the course of a year, he got so proficient by focusing on those basics that he now holds the sack record for our flag football team. Now, I mean, again, never playing before to that end result that we all want, right? Who doesn't like holding a record or earning an award, right? That's, that's what we want, but unless we focus on the steps that get us there, we're always gonna fall short. We're always gonna end up missing that mark 
because we're focused on the wrong things. Again, when we fight alone, we're easily overthrown. But when we focus on those basics, man, God can do amazing things. The question I have for us is with regard to these elementary basics, right? With regard to the prayer and the Bible study, in regard to our accountability, are we flourishing in our faith or are we floundering? And that's a fun phrase for you to remember the question, but really it means are you growing or are you stuck in the mud? Are you improving? Are you growing deeper roots? Are you growing stronger in your faith? Or are you in the same place you were one, two, three, five years ago? In order to flourish in faith, in order to have the fruit that we want, we've got to focus on what gets you there. You've got to focus on the things that nobody else sees. You know, and again, that's what's so amazing about these plants. They don't care. They don't care what they look like. They just care that they are strong and healthy and live as long as they can. For all intents and purposes, dandelions have one purpose. Grow a root, spread those seeds, and make your lawn miserable. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but seriously, right? They have that one purpose. They flower, and then they spread their seeds. And then it, that process just repeats and repeats and repeats. But dandelions are proficient at growth. I'll tell you what. And again, have we focused on the outside more than what's underneath the surface? Now, as we prepare for communion, we're going to turn one more chapter in the book of Ephesians. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 2. And this passage reads, Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children, and walk in love. As Christ also loved us and gave himself up for us, a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. You know, Paul is calling us to live by Jesus' example, being rooted and firmly established in love. And I think what's so amazing about Jesus' sacrifice is that the cross was not comfortable for him, but it is comforting for us. Because of his sacrifice, we can take comfort in knowing that we have an opportunity to have a relationship with God. That we have the doorway open to us to be able to spend eternity with the creator of the universe. But that is a choice for us to make. We have to choose to be firmly rooted and established in love. The cross came at a very high cost. It was uncomfortable for Jesus to go through, but he did it because he loved you. He did it because he knew it could bring you comfort. And the question I have for us is, will we choose comfort now over comfort for eternity? Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you for all that you do, God. You graciously give to us every single day. Lord, and I pray that, God, we as people of your word could be those devoted to putting in the work where we need to. God, to focus on the things that establish us as strong spiritual men and women here on earth so that we can make way for others, so we can be an example to others, so we can help others to enjoy the comfort that comes from your sacrifice. We love you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
Guys, thank you so much for joining us today for service. I am so excited for the year 2024. It's gonna be a great year, not only to grow closer to God, but to grow closer to one another and to get deeper in the word. We have so many amazing things coming down the pipeline here at Vessel Church, from great sermon series to cool Bible studies and everything in between. So please make sure that if you're in the Buffalo area, and even if you're not, stay connected with all of our social media and our website so that you can know everything that we've got going on. We love you. We hope you have a great year ahead. Take it easy and have a great day.